Before we get started, there will be spoilers for the Thousand Year Blood War arc of Bleach in the video to come. When Bleach came to an end with chapter 686, it brought with it a sense of closure, while also opening the door to the new generation. Ichigo and Orohime's son, Kazui Kurosaki and Rukia and Renji's daughter, Ichika Aburai were both introduced at the 11th hour, paving the way for future adventures to come. And begun those adventures have. With the release of the chapter New Breathes from Hell in 2021, Kazui and Ichika took center stage at last, and look set to play potentially major roles in the long-anticipated, much-rumoured and discussed Hell arc that may or may not be happening. Despite not having spent much time with either of these characters yet, both are intriguing in their own way, and strange occurrences are already cropping up around them. Kazui is opening up sinister portals without a care in the world, while Ichika seems to have a strange, unexplained connection to the Hell Hollows that emerged to fight Ichigo and the others. We're only one, albeit extra long, chapter into this new story, and already the newest cast members are stirring up trouble in some form or another. So, in today's video we're going to tackle the question, What's going on with Kazui and Ichika in the Hell Arc? Because something certainly is, and I imagine they'll both be key to whatever story unfolds before us. Before we get to that though, what little do we know about Kazui and Ichika from their brief initial appearance before New Breathes from Hell? Well, both characters first appeared in the final chapter of Bleach's original story, chapter 686, Death and Strawberry, with Ichika in particular only being introduced in the very last couple of pages, making her the final new character to be revealed in Bleach until the Hell chapter a few years later. Kazooie is portrayed as a bright-eyed and curious young boy, first seen trespassing in and wandering around what appears to be the abandoned warehouse hideout of the Visards. You'd think now that everything is all said and done regarding their relationship with the Soul Society, they'd find a nicer place to live, but there you go. He's discovered by Hiyori, who herself is now seen wearing a cap emblazoned with the logo of Ikumi Unagiya's shop, and she yells at him only for Kazui to escape. He's so quick that Hiyori can't keep up with him at all, instead noting how speedy he is. Kazui seems to be a mischievous yet innocent little scamp, though Orohime is able to keep watch on him from afar thanks to the Rika. At the end of the chapter, a sinister glob of Yuha Bark's Reiatsu appears in Ichigo's home, looking to make good on his final threat to kill them all at some point in the future, when they're all at their happiest and most content. Although it's not really confirmed what happens directly, we can surmise for ourselves that Kazui is so inherently powerful that when he playfully reaches for Yuha Bark's power, he simply quashes it in one fell swoop, destroying it and the final remnants of the Quincy King's threat once and for all, potentially without even meaning to do so. When Ichika later appears behind him in Yuzu's bedroom, Kazui reveals to her that he's also a Shinigami, but does so in an unusual way. Where Ichigo needs the assistance of a Jikongan or something similar to swap between his human and Shinigami forms, Kazui is able to shift between the two with no help whatsoever. His Shihakusho simply forms around him in a flash, allowing him to swap between the two worlds whenever he wants. Since Kazui's human and Shinigami bodies are one and the same, presumably this just means that when he activates his Shinigami form and his body is cloaked in darkness, his human body is therefore removed from the world of the living temporarily. It's almost like he temporarily dies or something, turning into a ghost before being able to revert himself back again whenever he likes. Essentially, if Kazui was to do this next to somebody who had no spiritual awareness whatsoever, I imagine he would just kind of blink out of existence and disappear. When you think about it like that, it's really a pretty remarkable ability. If Kazui was in the Soul Society or Waco Mundo at the time, would he simply not be able to return to his human form? Either way, it's incredibly convenient, and I assume it's a result of him being Ichigo's son. It feels like the natural evolution of what Ichigo already was. The fact you can see Kazui's hoodie poking out from under his Shihakusho isn't just a nice design element, it's proof that his Shihakusho essentially layers itself on top of what he's already wearing, combining both the human and Shinigami forms. Meanwhile, his Zanpakuto is also visible, with a 
the guard that looks like a wider, broader, almost cartoon-esque version of how Ichigo's used to look, which is interesting in itself. Since Kazui's Zanpak toe doesn't resemble Ichigo's true Zangetsu, but instead the way Zangetsu used to look while under the influence of Ichigo's Quincy powers, could that be being reflected here too? Then there's Ichika, who gets far less screen time here in chapter 686. She emerges from the wall in a similar fashion to how Rukia did all those years ago, before pointing her Zanpak toe at Kazui with a devious grin on her face. Ichika is noted to be a Shinigami cadet. Now, presumably that means she's already made it through the academy, unless the apprentice position comes before. Though that seems unlikely to me, especially since her Zanpak toe appears to be her own, as in she has already taken an Asauchi and made it hers, which would imply she has made it through the academy already, were she even required to enter. Speaking of which, the guard of her Zanpak toe takes the shape of a lightning bolt, similar to the design found on the guard of Renji's Zabimaru. In fact, Ichika seems to have taken after her father more overall, save for the way her bangs fall around her face, which is very much emblematic of Rukia. So there's not a huge amount to go on just by looking at their initial appearance. However, as we move over to the Hell chapter itself, things do get a lot more interesting. We begin with Kazui, who immediately shows us something we've never really seen before. A massive spectral fish is seen soaring through the sky above Karakura town in the middle of the night, leaving behind it a trail of smoky, wisp-like clouds. It's a very mystical-looking creature, and it's currently making its way to Ichigo's house. In fact, it's stopping right outside Kazui's window, seemingly ready to pick him up. It's hard to say, then, whether Kazui actually conjured this creature into existence, whatever it is, as it looks like nothing we've ever seen before, or if it perhaps makes nightly rounds and Kazui has built up a connection to it. I could honestly believe both. The creature seems to be corporeal, too, as Con is able to land on it safely despite being in his plushy body. Based on this initial close-up of the fish, we can see the fins of the one in front of it already. I'm honestly inclined to believe that this might be a stream of spiritual fish that make their way around the sky in some kind of leisurely manner, and Kazui happens to just use them to travel around, but really I've got no idea. It is interesting that at the start of the chapter, Kubo uses an analogy of two fish to describe the state of the gates to hell, the larger fish representing the combined power of Yuhabak and Aizen, who were keeping the smaller fish, here being hell, suppressed. However, when the larger fish died, the smaller one was suddenly able to grow and grow and flourish more and more, representing the sudden disappearance of both Yuhabak and Aizen's power, allowing Hell to rapidly expand its reach, leading to, presumably, the story today. Anyway, as Kazui leaps out of his window, he transforms into his Shinigami self in midair before landing on the fish. Here we get an even clearer look at his transformation than we did in chapter 686. His Shahakusho emerges from within like flames, wrapping itself around him, manifesting his sandals and all. He and Con head out into Karakura Town where they meet a lonely plus out on the streets. It's revealed that Kazui has been coming to hang out with this spirit and presumably others for many nights now to alleviate their loneliness, though Kazui notes he might not be able to come tomorrow for reasons unknown. Because of this, he decides to take the plus to a place where lots of spirits are gathered, giving him somewhere to stay and make friends. Kazui takes Con and the plus up a large staircase and towards a shrine, diverting as they reach the Tory gate and disappearing into a nearby thicket. On the other side of the bush is what looks like a small cairn of sorts, which Con immediately thinks looks scary. Cairns were most often used as either markers or more specifically to indicate burial mounds, and it's telling too that this marker, which appears to be some kind of designator to a potential entry point of hell itself, is obscured beside a much grander shrine atop a flight of stairs. It's as though the imagery of Kazui leading the plus up the stairs and towards the shrine was to showcase him leading him to heaven, only to divert at the last minute, taking him instead to this much more sinister idol. Kazui then initiates a ritual by clapping his hands and bowing when suddenly several 
bulbous, dripping eyeballs appear in the air in front of them as though they burst out of the sky itself. The eyes themselves appear to actually surround and look at Con as if connected to some larger entity. It's possible the eyes, or whoever they belong to, don't trust Con as this is his first time witnessing the ritual. As the ritual is completed, an enormous horrifying mouth opens up in front of Kazui. The portal is round and gaping, with a row of teeth adorning the top and bottom, giving the portal the appearance that it is screaming or roaring. And of course, this is the first time we have ever seen a gateway like this in Bleach, and we know from the rest of this chapter that it leads to hell. Kazui then tells the Plus to enter the doorway, reassuring him it'll be fine as everyone is in there. Kazui's childish innocence is clearly blinding him from the truth. The doorway he's opened is one to hell itself, and he's potentially, though we don't know for sure, dooming these pluses by sending them through the gate. So, what exactly is going on here? What's the deal with Kazui and these peculiar nighttime escapades? People have theorised that Kazui has some kind of dark connection to hell itself, or that his powers somehow stem from hell, but I think it's a lot simpler than that. This is of course only speculation, but I think a nefarious figure from Hell itself has managed to get into contact with Kazui, likely only possible due to the weakening of the boundaries that have allowed Hell to begin spilling over into the other worlds, and is manipulating the boy into sending souls to Hell. We have no idea how long Kazui has been sending spirits to Hell, but it's possible he's been inadvertently helping the dead denizens within to rip open the barrier between the worlds. I do have a few questions though regarding this. Is Kazui actually opening the portal himself, or is this mysterious figure from Hell playing along, essentially to trick the boy into thinking he's doing it, when in reality those in Hell are in control? We know that portals from inside Hell can now be opened thanks to the disappearances of Aizen and Yuharbark's overwhelming power, and we see Xyloporo do exactly that later in the chapter. Plus, if Kazui really is opening a portal to Hell, then how is he doing that? I can't imagine his little ritual is what's actually opening the door, as it seems oddly arbitrary, but I guess it's possible. If so, then who gave him that knowledge? Then there are the eyes themselves. Later, they are seen reforming in the eye sockets of one of the skeletons that hold shut the doors to hell, which is interesting in itself. Remember, way, way back in the day, those doors were originally our only reference point for hell in the source material, but here in the hell chapter, they only appear right at the very end, and seemingly don't have much to do with the events of the chapter itself, at least not on the surface. Kazui even seems to recognise the skeleton door, or at the very least isn't afraid of it, as he greets it with a broad smile when it appears in the sky above him at the end of the chapter, so maybe the skeletons holding the door are the ones conversing with him. But also, what's the deal with the doors to hell appearing in the sky like that out of nowhere? The last and only time we saw them in the source material, the doors to hell only materialised once a hollow had been killed with a Zan Pakto. At that point, judgement was passed, and the hollow was dragged into hell before the doors then disappeared once again. Therefore, they seemed to be working in tandem with the Shinigami's Zan Pakuto, and seemed to only appear when needed, before vanishing almost immediately afterwards. What if the doors appearing at the end of the chapter here signals that their plan, the villains in hell, has worked. If the floating eyes always represented the skeletal doormen of hell, as we'll call them now, then perhaps the doors materialised at last thanks to Kazui sending over the final soul they needed. The floating eyeballs were able to then return to the skeletons now capable of existing in the human world of their own accord. I guess what I'm getting at is maybe originally Hell only had enough power to materialise those eyeballs, but once Kazui sends over that last soul, Hell has enough strength to materialise the doors themselves, the skeletons, and those eyeballs then return home. Here are two ideas for what could happen in the immediate aftermath of this chapter if that theory is correct. Kazui obviously thinks that what he's done is a good thing, hence his huge innocent smile. Perhaps those doors suddenly open and who or what he's been talking with emerges. Could Kazui be taken into hell? What would be the purpose of that though if the villains inside hell wanted Kazui 
they could have taken him easily during his rituals. No, what seems more likely to me is that those doors will open and Karakura Town will suddenly be overrun by monstrous spirits as part of their invasion of their spilling over into the other worlds. Regardless, that's all we see of Kazui in the Hell chapter, but it's enough to understand that he has an important role to play. It seems to me that his innocence is being taken advantage of, and my guess is that he has helped facilitate the breaking open of Hell by ferrying souls there. It is also conspicuous that Kazui seems to be coming home without Con, so I wonder if he somehow found his way into the gateway too. On the flip side, despite getting more face time in the chapter than Kazui, Ichika's story starts out considerably more normal and far less ominous. Ichika attends a sparring class at Ikaku's new dojo until he's hastily called away on business. When she returns home, she overhears Renji talking to Ichigo about a mysterious ceremony called the Konso Reisai, which is being held in the late Captain Ukitake's name. Realising this is where Ikaku had to be and that Renji and Ichigo will be going too, Ichika decides to sneakily make her way to the world of the living in tow to see what the fuss is all about. She opens the Senkai Mon and arrives in Karakura Town in secret, hiding from her father and the other vice captains, all of whom have gathered to capture and kill a hollow as part of the ceremony. Now, what happens next is one of the most intriguing parts of the entire chapter, and it's the first moment that really begins to tie Ichika into the strange goings-on as well. Suddenly, out of nowhere, an eerie sensation, unlike any we've ever seen in the series before, overtakes Ichika, terrifying her. This feeling directs her attention to a gigantic abomination standing just behind Ichigo and Renji, the two of them apparently completely oblivious to its presence despite its massive size. So immediately this begs the question, how did Ichika sense the Hell Hollow when nobody else could? What was that sensation if not Rayatsu? It looks almost sickly and weird. Well, again, I have a few theories. Earlier in the chapter, we are greeted by a strange transition, a black smear along the base of a panel that almost looks like something moving upwards, and at first glance has nothing to do with the current scene being told. The same transition occurs almost at random later on, but this time it looks to be moving downwards. My assumption is these transitions represent the gates of hell slowly being pried open. Once Ichika senses the Hell Hollow, we get what looks like the same transition again, only this time both halves are together, perhaps indicating the doors to Hell, suddenly swinging ajar and allowing this demon out into the real world. So, is it possible then that what Ichika is sensing here isn't the Hell Hollow itself, but the actual gates to Hell finally breaking open? That doesn't explain why she's the only one who can sense it, though. Ichigo and Renji don't notice the creature at all until it hits Renji. It's almost as though it doesn't physically come into being until it strikes him, and yet Ichika can perceive it with no issue. Whether it's the creature's own aura or the doors to hell that Ichika is sensing is unclear, but what's crucial here is that she is the only one to notice it. So, how is this possible? As far as we know, neither Renji nor Rukia has any ties to Hell, and I wouldn't expect them to either. I have two potential theories then, insofar as to how Ichika sensed the creature's arrival. Number one is that it's to do with her proximity to Kazui, if Kazui does indeed have some kind of connection to Hell. Ikaku hints that she and Kazui are very close, and likely spend a lot of time hanging out whenever they can. If Kazui was opening portals to Hell even back then, perhaps Ichika absorbed some of Hell's essence or something like that by osmosis, and that's affected her perception. What if Ichika joined Kazui on one of these nightly jaunts and witnessed a portal opening herself? Again, I have no idea, I'm just spitballing theories here. But the other idea intrigues me perhaps even more. You need a hell butterfly in order to come through a Senkai Mon. That is well known and has been since the start of the series. And we see that Ichika used one when she arrives in Karakura Town. But... Maybe it's just me, but I feel like Kubo makes a real point of highlighting the hell butterfly that's with Ichika at the time. She's only just exited the Senkai Mon, so the butterfly would still be around in that moment. Perhaps then, one can only be made aware of the denizens of hell when in the presence of a hell butterfly. If the hell butterfly was hovering around Ichika still after she emerged from the Senkai Mon, perhaps that is what alerted her to the monster. Who knows 
how long that Hell Hollow has been standing there or how it managed to move throughout Karakura Town without anyone noticing it. Perhaps, and this is maybe the most likely answer, it simply rose up through a portal on the ground beside Ichigo and Renji. Xyloporo even notes at the end of the chapter that Hell has always been beside you, implying that the butterflies are indeed a link to Hell of some kind. Honestly, that seems like a good reason to me and may mean the Hell butterfly are more actively included in the future if the Shinigami need to use them to perceive hell, perhaps? And so that's everything on Kazui and Ichika in the hell chapter so far. As you can see, both of them already seem to be intertwined in the plot that's unravelling, and both of them seem to have some kind of connection to hell, though the origins of that are still unclear. The end of the chapter does seem to implicate Kazui, both in what's just happened and what's just about to. He seems blissfully unaware that he's helped to set Hell's wrath upon the world of Bleach, Unless he really is the holder of some demonic power and is in league with Hell itself, though I find that pretty unlikely. Meanwhile, Ichika somehow senses the Hell Hollow long before anyone else. Personally, I think the coolest idea is that it's down to the influence of having recently used a Hell Butterfly, but I guess we'll have to see what happens. It's possible the Hell Butterflies maybe allow you to peer into the domain of Hell while not in Hell? and otherwise it cannot be perceived until you are actively attacked or there's some kind of physical touch. As we saw when the creature attacked Renji, suddenly everyone was able to realise they were there. I have no idea, we're going off on a rambling tangent, but as far as I'm concerned, that's probably my favourite theory. But that's it for the video, guys. As always, I really hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What's going on with Kazui and Ichika so far in the Hell arc? What do you think of my theories? Could any of them be correct, or am I totally off base? As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. And I want to end, as we always do, by saying a massive thank you and giving a huge shout out to my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. I really do appreciate each and every one of you so very much. If you want to support me over on Patreon, you can do just that to get your name in the credits like this and to get every video I release absolutely ad-free. All right, guys, but until next time, I'll catch you later, and I'll see you then.